swoops on the crowd. A massive basket. Three, you are kidding me. And the fire burns brightest. Townsville are WNBL champions for the fourth time. Welcome to Bendigo Red Energy Arena here, the second game of your Signet WNBL doubleheader. The Bendigo Spirit and the Southside Flyers have made the trip up the highway to take on Bendigo today. It is a rematch of a game eight days ago in which the Southside Flyers defeated Bendigo 76-51 at the State Basketball Centre. Liam Elton here alongside me is Mark Alabakov once again. Mark, welcome. We've got another action-packed game to look forward to. You've got the Southside Flyers who were humbled by the Townsville Fire last start on Thursday. They'll have a chance to get back on track, more so with their alertness and response on the defensive end. And then Bendigo, they've won three of their past four games and Coach Kennedy Kariyama and his troops haven't yet beaten a top four team as yet this season, but there's no time like the present in the comfort of your own home. And was some conjecture as well earlier in the day that maybe we would not see Kelsey Griffin in the lineup. For for Bendigo, but she is fit in uniform and ready to play, Mark. And the spirit are always better with her out there on the floor. She had 10 points, 8 rebounds and an assist against the Adelaide Lightning, but she's a pillar. She adds leadership, she's proactive when it's winning time, and she's an athlete that you can believe in and draw strength from when you're out there on the floor with her. And the Southside Flyers, well, I mean, they come in off a really tough loss Thursday night against the Townsville Fire. We thought it was going to be Maybe one of the games of the round is Kelsey Griffin. You can see her number 17 and 8. And she clearly is has her team motoring. One of the reasons why they are in great form. Well, she just gets you going when it's winning time. And she's an athlete that you can rely upon whether she's playing for half the game, she's starting the game. When she's out on the floor, she makes things happen and she elevates the play of everybody around her. Certainly does. And Beck Cole, meanwhile, well, on Thursday, the Flyers, a lot of their stars struggled in that game. Beck Cole did not. Had a double-double with 10 dimes. Yeah, and she was a shining light. Her and Jazz Dickey, but Beck Cole in particular gave you the 16 points, but 10 assists, which is over double her average. So her being able to be a catalyst and have the awareness to get other people involved and make the play that she sees and not chase trying to put points on the board, that shows the maturity and the level of class that she brings to this lineup. Southside skipper has them at five and three as we take a look at the ladder. Bendigo hot on the tails of the likes of the Flames and the Southside Flyers in fourth and fifth. Yeah, and this like this ladder is going to shake out as the season wears on. But for the Flyers, this one's crucial because it could put them back into second place on the Signet WNBL ladder. But for the Bendigo spirit, it's a chance to inch closer towards that top four. So one win puts them on the cusp and only a win behind Southside Flyers. And then they'll have a 1-1 one -one split between them with a rubber match deciding their head-to-head. -head. Big result earlier for the Adelaide Lightning as well. Breaking the close game hoodoo, if you like. Getting the victory over the Melbourne Boomers in Parkville to sit equal on win with the Bendigo spirit and speaking of this is how they will line up coming into this contest. Yeah, and that's quite a lineup, you know, in terms of the pace that they play with. Ali Wilson has been tremendous for the Spirits, so especially in the last game against Adelaide. She gave you 15 points, was highly efficient, but a big part with the explosiveness that she has in them being able to have 25 points against the Lightning off fast breaks and points off turnovers. Merrin Cracker, I mean, incredible job that she had uh, against Adelaide as well, scoring the 20 points but hitting the dagger three that ultimately was the nail in the coffin for the Lightning. Nadia Poch was big last time these two teams met eight days ago, had 17 and nine in that contest. She did, and she's got to step up uh, from her last start. So between Rochi Poch and Lauren Jackson, they played less than their best in their last game. Eight points combined between them, which is very much unlike what we're used to seeing. So look for them to be aggressive and try and get themselves on the scoreboard and get their mojo back. It's a start started starting lineup once again for the Southside Flyers. Bendigo looking to protect their home floor here at Red Energy Arena. And we know every game as we approach the midway point of the season, in a way, must win. But Bendigo, three and five, if they want to stay in touch with the final four. Got to get the job done here this afternoon. They really do, and it's important in terms of the psyche of your team to be able to know that you can compete with the best teams in the competition. So to have an opportunity to potentially knock off a top four team, that'll do wonders for their confidence going towards Christmas and beyond. Flyers will be hoping not to go 0-2 on this round seven doubleheader. Final game of the round in the Signet WNBL on your Sunday evening hoops, and Mercedes Russell wins it down to Poch for the first possession. 
Flyers in their away whites today. And the Bendigo Spirit in their Indigenous round jerseys. Jackson. On the perimeter. Elsie Griffin right there. Cole, jab step. Russell, mid-range two. Just strong and Poch contesting with Crocker. Now on the wing is Abby Werung. Makes her move inside out to Ruth Davis. Ali Wilson. Goes herself. Wilson makes the three first points for Bendigo. They do an excellent job, the Spirit, in being able to play against mismatches when they force a switch in a pick and roll. Massive three pointer there from Ali Wilson. Poch has Jackson on the perimeter. Beck Cole, 10 dimes last week. There's Russell at the elbow, provides the screen on where on Cole will pull up for two. She's comfortable being a, a very much strong right-handed driver. When she goes to her left, she's got great body control to pull up on a dime and hit the mid-range jumper. Aaron Crocker just miscommunicating there with Kelsey Griffin. Four triples in the last contest, Marin Crocker. Sorry, Mark. Yeah, and, and she was probably in two minds whether Griffin was rolling to the basket or popping to space because she's so dangerous in both of those areas. Rochi. Russell and Poch. Here's Abby Werung right up in the grill of Cole. Griffin switches onto the ball. Over to Poch, who uncharacteristically fumbles that time. Sideline ball, Bendigo. Some early indications of the pressure of this contest. Last game of the round, but both teams, this win would be really important to them in terms of the context of their season. It would be. Werung, around that screen. What about the mid-range, Jay? Instead, it'll be Griffin off the window. No good. Cole. Ahead to Rochi. Jackson with the screen. Rochi can fire here. No good off the window. Fell in the lap of Mercedes Russell. The whistle first. Goes against the spirit. Now, I really like what Mercedes Russell did in that last possession. The moment that the ball turned over and went to the Flyers, she took off down the floor. She was some two metres ahead of Ruth Davis down the floor. So Davis had to expend so much energy just to get back. Didn't have the energy to box her out on that play. Nicole. Eight second shot clock, Rochi weaving around the screen. Now inside to Russell, got the length to get it away, but quick hands, Bendigo lands with Poch, a second remains and follows her own miss, Nadia Poch. Hustle in the end, not rewarded, and Griffin will rip it and go for the Spirit. In transition was Werang, Southside basketball. Lots of pressure early on, you see some uncharacteristic fumbles by both teams. Just feeling each other out in the early stages here, trying to find their own rhythm. In the opening two and a half minutes. One bucket apiece. Poch. Under a lot of pressure once again. Just tapped it to the advantage of Cole, who lost her footing. And the call goes against Werung. Either that or they've been to the popcorn stand and they've all got butterfingers. <laughs> Somehow I don't think that's the case. Probably not. <laughs> Southside ball. Have a look. I mean, in all seriousness, look at the pressure. I mean, Abby Wehran climbing into the ball forces the mishandle. And there you see it again. Once again. And Rochi will try and apply that very pressure on Wilson. Who can settle into this ball game first? Spirit with a chance here. Crocker. Dive into the bucket was Griffin. Crocker tried to reward the cut turnover. Rochi the other way. We know how dangerous she is downhill. Goes right at Wilson. Opts to back it out here. And LJ to Cole. Top of the arc. And nobody picked her up on that play. So Cole just goes to her left hand into that pull-up that she's so comfortable with. Knocks down the J. Crocker the handoff. Griffin with the catch. Now Wilson. Contest from Rochi was a foul. Ali Wilson will go to the strike for two. 
And she's a hard person to mark defensively because she's so shifty. She pulls up, she hesitates. The stop and go ability of Ali Wilson, she's able to either find space for herself or she inevitably draws contact. And here she gets herself on the line. Good on the first. One thing that she's not is in awe of the big moment. She wants the ball in her hands and is comfortable making plays when the team needs it. And two of two. The Bendigo point guard. Rochi under pressure immediately. And another foul call. You see the Bendigo spirit after the free throw deploying a 2-2-1 three-quarter court press so this is intended to put a whole lot of pressure on the ball handler so they're testing the decision making of Maddie Rochi and trying to put her in a crowd so there you go it's been fruitful twice in a row so being able to force uh, I mean, nearly a turnover but they had the foul call earlier and then the travel call just then turnover against Rochi it's an early win to Kennedy Kariyama and his spirit defense absolutely 14 to work with for Bendigo. Southside chatting things over with the referees. Jackson and Rochi exchanging some words, and here we go. Griffin. Werung with the handoff, moving it nicely. It's Wilson who's open. Not that time for the spirit, but it was good movement. Rochi. It'll be a fun matchup today. Ali Wilson and Matty Rochi, two lightning quick guards. Poch. Inside to Jackson. Goes to work on Griffin. Easy as you like. And she's made a career out of that drop step and keep the ball high, fade layer. Kelsey Griffin driving out Russell off the window. Tough finish for KG23. Now, if you're Russell, you think that you've done enough to be able to contain her, but KG has done, you know, again, I talk about her making a career out of a move, being able to find the window on that layup finish. Russell, away from home. Ruth Davis in defence. Gets a shot away. One-legged fadeaway, and Jackson on the follow, no good. Just lost her balance. Now, the challenge for the Southside Flyers is when you get the ball into scoring positions, what do the other four athletes do? If they stay stationary and then the defense has an opportunity to come and really dig in and shrink all of the space around whoever has the basketball, that's a win for the defense. So can you have either cutting actions or screening actions off the ball to keep all of the defenders honest and then create space for the person with the basketball? Kelly Wilson has checked in for Kennedy Kariyama's team. Crocker. Here's the screen provided to the skipper, Kelsey Griffin, again, straight to the cup. Spirit are out by three here. Big early start by Kelsey Griffin to get the spirit going. Rochi, looking to return fire for Southside. Inside to Russell. Alicia Froling now trying to stop Mercedes Russell, offensive foul. Muscled her way inside illegally, said the referee. Now, you like that for the most part if you're Coach Cheryl Chambers, you know, being able to not stray away from physicality. You've just got to keep your elbow down. So the moment that you extend there and push off the defender, that's always going to be whistled against the offense. You've almost got to pinch your armpits together and then be able to use your body separation to get the airspace to shoot it. I like the way you put that, Mark, as Griffin lets it fly. She is on fire in the first quarter. Now, early momentum to the spirit off the back of a hot start from Kelsey Griffin. If there's a missed shot here from the Flyers and a make by the spirit, Coach Shell Chambers will call a timeout. Jazz Dickey out there, 20 points last outing on Thursday, as is Carly Ernst. Ball here against Bendigo. Griffin's got seven early points. Three or four from the field. And she will take a break. And head to the locker room at that. Hopefully no bad news for the spirit. Here's Rochi. Just off that time and Alicia Froling pulls it down. Ali Wilson thought about the triple, has the big Russell there and flipped it over to Froling. Denial came first. 
Big Indigo basketball. That's a great pass by Ali Wilson, going to the rim, flipping it over the shoulder. But this is the challenge when you've got the tall temper in the paint here from the Southside Flyers. So if Mercedes Russell didn't get to that, right behind was Carly Ernst. When you've got 6'5 five and 6'5 five at the rim and you know, arguably seven feet tall when they raise an arm, it's hard to get shots off at the point of the rim. They're huge the Flyers, we know that. And that's a turnover. Or is it? Confirmation for the referee. Thought maybe it caught a deflection off that Casey Samuels entry pass. Flyers ball, Leilani Mitchell getting some burn as well. And that's one of the benefits that you have if you're the Flyers, to be able to bring in a calm-headed point guard who's just great at managing the game late in quarters like Leilani Mitchell. You know that you're going to get efficient offense and you're going to get the types of shots that you want. Inside to Ernst, linking up with Cole and they come across to swarm her. Froling and Samuels with the stop. Samuels releasing Froling. And the Flyers have stopped the transition points there. Chance to set again via Casey Samuels. Froling diving to the bucket. Runs into Cole. Dickey came across to help. And the whistle. Two shots coming up for Alicia. I like the commitment to running that the Spirit have had. So they've obviously done their homework. That The teams that have troubled the Southside Flyers, you know, when you design a way to win, you design a way to lose, right? So for the size that they have and the possession play that that can create, it becomes challenging to cover the floor in transition because you just don't have the pace that a smaller, quicker player would have. So look for a, a, a real commitment by the Bendigo Spirit. The moment the ball change, uh, changes hands to whoever gets outletted the basketball, trying to have it fly up and down the floor. So splits a pair at the line, but Kelly Wilson wins it back for Bendigo. 10 second shot clock, three ball goes up and in. Another one for the Spirit. They lead by double figures here. And Marin Crocker has her first three of the contest. That's a big shot, so she's riding a whole lot of confidence coming out of the win against the Adelaide Lightning, where she knocked four of those down. Gets hot early, that's going to do a heap for her confidence. 16-6, three and a half remaining in the first quarter. And this timeout is brought to you by our major partners here at the WNBL Signet. Australia's number one digital accessories brand, Signet, continues to power the WNBL. Australian-owned and designed Signet is available at JB Hi-Fi, Officeworks and other leading retailers. Visit Signet.com today, powering every moment. And this is the perfect start, Mark Alabakov, for Bendigo. They've got the 10-point lead and Kennedy Kariyama would have to be pretty happy. Absolutely it would be. You know, coming out and starting off hot on the offensive end is really, really important. When you're playing a team like the Southside Flyers, any mental edge that you can get you know, goes a long way to be able to, to gain the ascendancy in the contest. Now, the Flyers are a quality lineup. They'll work their way back into this game, but the Spirit will be gaining confidence from the pace that they can play with to trouble the Flyers and then being able to create high percentage shots. They've knocked down the two threes so far. You know, that's been somewhat of an Achilles heel in the early part of the season. So to see two go down is a huge start and it'll open up the paint for them moving forward. Great start for the home side here on your Sunday evening hoops. Jazz Dickey handling the rock. Cole goes right down the middle. No call and it's up and in. Wanted it from the line. Beck Cole, tough finish. Head to Samuels. Wilson pulls the trigger straight away. He won't go that time. It looks like a 2-3 zone deployed by the Southside Flyers. It's often a go-to from Coach Cheryl Chambers when she's looking to change the tempo of the game and force some new solutions out of the Benigo spirit. Mitchell. Here's Mercedes Russell on the perimeter with five seconds. It'll be the skipper, Beck Cole, to bail them out. Pulls up, top of the painted area, and it goes. She's playing with a world of confidence right now. Wilson inside. And not quite. And the end of it was frolling. But you still like that. If you're Coach Kennedy Kariyama, you like the tempo push, right? So the early outlet and then the, the run ahead and kick ahead, while that play doesn't come off, it's a, it's a good turnover. Something good would have happened had the ball been caught. Mitchell and Wilson. Here's Jackson at the elbow with the screen for Cole. 
Penetrating kick out, Carly Ernst. First look at it for her as Jackson was battling on the rebounding contest. Tapped out to the advantage of Werrum. Frohling's cutting through the middle and Ernst is going to be assessed with a foul. Just have to hold their nerve. It's a great push of the ball again, so it's causing headaches for the Southside Flyers. But Southside, the emotional control becomes really important now. So you've come off a really big loss against uh, the Townsville Fire in your last start. You know that you've had a really big win against this Bendigo team and the game is trending in the opposite direction. There's still so much basketball to be played. You've got to be able to have not only foul discipline, but you know, not allow the way the scoreline is trending to affect your confidence is to make it an eight-point lead to the Spirit. And she makes no mistake. Shooting 50% from the field, Bendigo. The two skippers lead the way in the scoring column. Here's Rochi. We're on. This is her to pick up her dribble. Mitchell bails out via Dickey. Look at the Bendigo pressure. It's keeping the ball pinned to a side and a metre outside the three-point line. Ernst has been fouled. Fourth team foul on the Spirit. Flyers in a hurry just to try and alleviate the pressure. They're doing nothing threatening going to the basket. It's more keeping the basketball safe, which is a win for the Bendigo defence. Has been swarming defence from the home side. Ernst will take a spell. Here is Rochi. Flyers will opt with Jackson in the middle. As Dickey from the baseline. First point of the contest for her. Ahead straight away. Three goes up. Same spot. Couldn't get the same result, Casey Samuels. But it's a commitment to playing quickly back the other way. Mitchell, 90 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Poch combining with Rochi. Inside to Jackson, fronts and fires. Just strong. Wilson, assessing options forward. Samuels, handoff, here's the screen from Froling. Wilson hands it back, now inside, it's Jackson and Froling. Seven second shot clock, Samuels, back iron three. Mitchell, throws it ahead immediately. Rochi threatening with a penetration. Two-man game between Ladani Mitchell and Nadia Poch. Mitchell will fire inside the arc. And Samuels pulls it down. Wilson, Griffin for three. Found its way out to Werung as Samuels got Poch off the ground. And nearly a continuation opportunity. But see, by playing fast and getting the ball moving, the Flyers have to expend energy getting down the floor, and then they've moved the ball side to side. All of the defenders are in rotation. They're off balance. And you get the ball into Samuels there. She's able to use a fake to keep Poch even more off balance, ride the contact, and get herself on the line. Just off on the first. Now, this has been an Achilles heel for Benigo as well, is the free throw shooting. They get a heap of opportunities to get on the line. If they can increase their clip from here, it'll start to stretch out margins. And on the second, it goes down. Shot clock off. Trailing by seven, the Flyers. Dickey. And Matty Rochi hoping for that last look of the quarter. In safe hands with Leilani Mitchell. Dickey open for three, opted against it. Again goes the baseline, Jay, and again she drains it. Time will expire here. Bendigo lead this one by five points at Red Energy Arena.
looking for your pathway in basketball? She Hoops Leadership and Confidence Scholarship can help. We're offering 30 girls from around Australia the opportunity to develop as coaches, players and officials with mentoring from some of Australia's best basketballers and some of Australia's best coaches in breaking down barriers. If you're a girl aged 15 to 18, then this is for you. This five-month program will accelerate your development both on and off the court. Interested? Head to shehoops.com.au to apply. Welcome back to Bendigo, the Flyers and the Spirit. Five-point lead to Bendigo. Started this one just as they would have hoped. Kelsey Griffin leading the way quick out of the blocks. Couple of dives to the bucket. Tough finishes. Hits on three as well. She's got seven to lead the way, Mark Alabakov. And she brings so much confidence, not only by the way that she plays, but her presence. But in particular, what's been most impressive is the transition play, the commitment to running and being able to spread the floor is creating headaches at the moment for the Southside Flyers. So they've been able to get uh, five points off turnovers and fast breaks combined. That puts your defense in rotation. So they've been able to get two offensive rebounds and three second chance points. So just keeping the scoreboard ticking over off effort-based metrics at the moment, the Spirit. And we're underway here in the second quarter. Kelly Wilson off the pine once again this afternoon. Leilani Mitchell defending the rock. Griffin inside the paint. Contest from Russell was terrific. Coming across late. And you see that 2-3 zone again by Coach Cheryl Chambers. So still trying to wrestle back some of the momentum from the Bendigo spirit. Mitchell. Now it's Dickey in the corner. Russell trying to find position on the low block. Poch hesitates, puts the shoulder down, goes right at Wilson, and it rattles out the south side. Wilson sees it out of there for Bendigo. Goes at Poch herself now. Baby jumper won't go. Froling, extra possession, Bendigo. Kelly Wilson. Has the pick from Froling, rolling to the bucket, had space and making no mistake. And that's a great pass by Kelly Wilson. She's as good as anybody off the pick and roll at making decisions, but then she puts the ball out in front of the roller so they can run onto it without having to reach behind them. Russell, screen on Ali Wilson and putting the shoulder down. Offensive foul, says the referee. Credit to Alicia Froling. She's obviously done her homework in terms of scouting Mercedes Russell. So when Russell gets a catch, watch for her to take a dribble immediately and she tries to find your body with her upper arm. So she leverages that body contact to get her own balance. So anticipating that Froling, she's able to wear the contact down the middle and take the charge. Seven-point lead is Wilson. Corralled by Rochi. Nice find of Froling. Extra pass. Wilson's open for three. And Poch is there for the Flyers. What's ahead for Rochi? She's going to go herself to the cup. Backed out. Cole drains it into double figures. Beck Cole with 11. Coming up big, both her and Jazz Dickey so far carrying the offense for the Flyers. Wilson, not quite off the window. Show, showcasing some aggression early on in this second quarter is Kelly Wilson. You want to see that out of her because she's such a tremendous passer. As Leilani Mitchell puts down the three, the Flyers, Mark, back within one here. Huge response there, and I like them being able to use some of that template that the Spirit, you know, were able to wrestle the ascendancy away early with. So being able to get a stop, kick the ball ahead, and try to play against the Spirit defense while they're in transition, while there's space. This time out brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Proudly supporting community basketball in Australia and supporting the WNBL this season. Back to a one-point ball game. The Flyers with a couple of threes going down via Cole and Leilani Mitchell. And a 6-2 start here, Mark Alabakov, in the second quarter. Big start. And, you know, Beck Cole getting them going with a, a massive three ball. And then, obviously, the one there from Leilani Mitchell. So, them staying aggressive, this will be a settler for them. But I like the, the game plan from Coach Kennedy Kariyama to come out and try to run the ball quickly uh, back down the, the throats, essentially, of the, the Southside Flyers. The challenge that you have with that is, can you be quick but not in a hurry? Can you force pace but not force decision-making? 
Cole, the perfect five of the five from the field so far. And speaking of challenges, last time these two met, Southside out rebounded Bendigo 56 to 33. Pretty even though so far today, just 13 to 12 in that respect. Bendigo have cleaned up their act. They have. And I mean, the Flyers aren't going to get any shorter. So you'll find that they're always going to be up and around the mark from a rebounding perspective just on that fact alone. Crocker. Griffin will turn and fire. And Cole will start the offense for Southside. Rochi. Around a handoff, picked up her dribble. Potch moved onwards to Mitchell Travel. Would just like to see Southside keep the basketball moving more instinctively. So you find that they'll come down the floor, they'll call an offense, the ball will move quickly for the first pass or two within the offense, and then once it gets to the middle or the second side of the floor, it sticks. Where on? Griffin arrives with the screen. And again, a turnover. Trying to reward her roll to the bucket, or is it? Last touch south side, it seems. Now, that's the second miscommunication with Kelsey Griffin. So this would be an opportunity in a huddle in this situation here to gain clarity. If you're Abby Werung, go and ask Kelsey Griffin, are you popping or are you rolling? What is your preference? So you can anticipate and get her the ball in scoring positions. Had a good look at it there. Deflected off Poch. So it remains Bendigo ball. Davis, long range. Poch crashing the glass. And Southside cleaned it up. Rochi can slingshot the other way on the counter-attack. Cole lets it fly. And Griffin able to clean it up. Moving it quickly down the floor. That pass had to be perfect. And Davis with the finish. And that's what makes her so valuable is the reach that she has, the reach advantage, even over the athleticism of defenders. You've just got to put the ball up near the hoop and she can catch it. Cole. Jackson posting up. It'll be Rochi from the elbow. Back to a one-point ball game. Three and a half gone here in the second quarter. Davis awaits Werung. Penetrates and again with her feet set, not that time. It was Marin Crocker. Pulled up for that one very deep. It was the right drive and kick decision because you had the defender, I believe it was Beck Cole, hedge across towards the ball handler to stop a layup. The kick to Crocker's open. That might have been a driving lane rather than a three from the car park. Flyers working their way back into this one after a tough opening quarter. Potch assessing, time winding down. They look stagnant at the moment, Southside. Cole gets the shot away. But has to hit that because there's no one from the Flyers inside the key wave to rebound that or even contest it or stop the, the fast transition that the Spirit want to play with. Southside take the lead for the first time since the opening moments. And Griffin and Potch have collided here on the drive. I mean, it goes without saying, Kelsey Griffin is as tough as nails. Whether she's at a full bill of health or she's held together by sticky tape, she's always going to play to win every time she touches the basketball and put her body on the line like this. And that's why she's been such a tremendous player within the Signet WNBL for so long. But she's a winner. Every program that she's been a part of has been highly successful. Yeah, spot on, Mark. As tough as they come, Kelsey Griffin. Kelly Wilson back out there. This to wrestle back the lead for the Bendigo Spirit. So two apiece for Potch and Mercedes Russell in the foul column. Southside are 11 and 4 in their past 15 games against the Bendigo Spirit. So as a club, they've had the wood over Bendigo in recent years. Tied up once again after splitting a pair at the line. Rochi. Long floater goes down. A good read by Rochi to get her feet into the paint. And then you had Lauren Jackson going to the O glass as well. Having a presence there of that size is going to help the Flyers. Crocker goes at Cole. And Crocker gets the bucket and one. One to come at the line. Now, the concerning thing is Nard's Potch on the split line defensively. She's the last line of help to stop any open layups. And the last game that they played uh, against the Townsville Fire, the alertness on the defensive end was to their downfall. That's an example of it. They've got to shore that up to tighten the screws defensively and not allow easy baskets like that one. Nearly the mistake here. 
It'll be Southside ball once again. Bendigo, though, look at this pressure. They've done it throughout the contest. And I like how they sandwiched Maddie Rochi there. So they're forcing Beck Cole to carry the basketball, which means she's not in a scoring position. She's in an organising position. Dickey recovers, goes herself to the rack. And it goes against Southside. One point ball game. Indigo remaining in the lead here. Here's a great look at it. Jazz Dickey. Drive right at Davis. The double handed block attempt. I think they called a push on Lauren Jackson. She was being boxed out and tried to wrestle for position but extended her arms. And she will take a break. Lauren Jackson. Just her first personal. It's not a bad sub when you can bring in Carly Ernst with her three-point shooting and just her awareness to pass the basketball. Isn't it? Not a bad sub on this Southside roster. Wilson. Spins out of trouble. Floater takes a kiss off the window and in. Matty Rochi. Over to Cole, now Potch in the corner. Entered inside to Ernst. And couldn't get it on the follow. Davis cleans it up. Bendigo, move it ahead. And nice run in transition. Merrick Clark is on the end of it. Great time for a timeout, as you see here from Coach Cheryl Chambers. You've got to get either more presence on the offensive glass to try to stall the leaking out of the basketball or get a safety back to try to stop those open layups. Timeout back to a five point lead for the Bendigo Spirit. And this timeout brought to you by CTM Sport. Here to transform your team's travel experience, leave the hassle of off court arrangements to CTM Sport, the experts in sports travel management. Get the winning edge at CTM Sport. Dot com dot au. Plenty of tournaments around the country over the summer holidays for many juniors and CTM Sport could be the answer for you. Five point ball game. Bendigo have regained control here. Remains Griffin who leads the way in the scoring column. But Ali Wilson, Mark, had some moments here. Yeah, she's crafty off the pick and roll and she's fast in transition. That stop go that she can play with is hard to deal with. But it's this stuff, the early kick aheads in transition, the moment that the ball changes possession, even off a score, they want to outlet it quickly and try to throw it ahead before all of the six foot plus Southside Flyer defenders get back to protect the paint. 425 remaining in the first half. Spirit really buying into Coach Kennedy Kariyama's plan to try to deal with this Flyers outfit. So far, it's paying dividends. Executed it nicely, haven't they? And Crark has picked up where she left off, and Bendigo's last outing as well against Adelaide. And Wilson just picks Dickey's pocket. Wilson ahead. Going to slow it up here is Kelly. With the pump fake, Samuels travel. Lost Potch with the pump fake, but... Just lifted that foot. She probably didn't need to stop there. I thought she did a really good job of keeping the basketball protected. Uh, and Potch, in her foul trouble, has just walled up. What she could have done there was leverage a bit of contact, keep her body between Potch and the basketball, and then she would have had airspace to shoot over the top. But it puts Potch in a position where she's got to give up a score or earn her third foul. Yeah, spot on. Cheryl Chambers not taking any risk. Posh, Posh hits the bench. And a call here against the Spirit. Now, if you're the Flyers, how do you stop the Spirit from getting out and running? One is your shot selection. So it's got to come within rhythm, within the confines of whatever your offense is, so it's predictable and you can send people to rebound it. And Cole, then, no good on the turnaround, too. Sorry, and, Mark. No, you're right. And then two, committing to going to try and rebound the basketball. Kelly Wilson. Davis on the perimeter. It is a very even rebounding stat line so far. And Cole out of nowhere to poke it out of bounds. Quick thinking. Eight seconds for the Spirit to work with on the baseline. Wilson will draw it up. Crocker had a great look at the rim and makes no mistake from long range. 
A very long range, so you're probably not expecting that shot if you're Leilani Mitchell, but with the way that Kruk is shooting the basketball, you've got to get a hand up the moment she catches the ball, regardless of how much gap distance you're going to give her as a defender. Now two of three from long range in this one, Kruker. Mitchell flips it over to Rochi for three. Wilson searching for that outlet, outlet pass up ahead. Rochi, foul call. Or is it? Goes against Ali Wilson. Yeah, and this is what you've got to do. If you're guarding Ali Wilson, you put somebody on her that's as quick. So someone like Rochi that can hold pace and try to beat her to spots on the floor. Third on Ali Wilson. So Wehrung will re-enter. Now that's key because Ali Wilson's been a huge catalyst for their offense. She's got the seven points, she's got one assist, she's been able to get herself on the free throw line as well. Russell. Rochi trying to throw it inside. Crocker with the help defense. And I think it's going to be assessed a foul against Marin Crocker. And what you're looking for, if you're Maddie Rochi on that possession, you're looking for where the extra help is coming from. So watch the two defenders go across to try and tip the ball going to Mercedes Russell. So a pass fake to her when you've dragged two people to her and a skip to the corner will give you an open three. Into Cole. Space to work in the mid-range. Beck Cole continues her hot shooting. Wilson straight away ahead to Froling. Russell got back. And it's going to be Bendigo basketball, I believe. Sure is. Some confusion from both teams. I don't think that was a foul call, because that would be problematic if that's the third one on Mercedes Russell. I think the referee was signalling to the baseline. Might have just yeah. stepped out of bounds. Bendigo basketball, nonetheless. Six-point ball game. Led by 10 in the first quarter at one stage, Bendigo. Southside retake the lead. But now they've got control again. Casey Samuels tried to combine with Guerin, couldn't. Leilani Mitchell, two on two situation. She'll pull up for three and nail it. That's cold blooded by Leilani Mitchell to pull up, knowing that everybody was running with Matty Rochi, sinks the open three. Samuels puts it on the deck. Ernst did well to corral. Russell came to meet Wilson at the perimeter. Crocker again for three. Cole with the rake and tape. Now ahead to Rochi. On the low block, wanting to post up as the point guard. Count the bucket, says the referee. And that's a tough play. Being able to go quickly. I like the intent there from Maddie Rochi to push the basketball. Carly Ernst was running ahead. She pulled up a little bit early here. I would love to see her cut down the middle of the paint there so she's not only a target, but she's also a rebounding option if Rochi missed that shot. Rochi has tied it up here at Red Energy Arena. Flyers reel off an 8-0 run. Froling gets tied up with Cole. And it's going to go against Alicia Froling. This is the challenge that you have if you're Alicia Froling. She does a, a wonderful job of getting her body in the road when she's screening. Sometimes that can be a 50-50 if she, her feet are moving. In that case, the referee is signalling an offensive foul. Flyers in the bonus on the next defensive foul. Here's Russell. Wanting that handoff, gets it via Mitchell. She's got the hot hands. Not that time. Griffin in the open floor. Russell slows her up. Kelly Wilson and off Crocker. Hasn't she been terrific so far in this one? Gets it over to Werang. One of the best shooters in the Signet WNBL puts it down. And that's her spot out there on the, the wing there. Rochi. Just weaving through the keyway, assessing. Now they get it down low. Russell, tough to stop. Timeout, 105 remaining in the half. One point ball game. Bendigo 37, Southside 36. Offense starting to flow over the last two to three minutes here, Mark. And a game of adjustments. So we talked earlier about Mercedes Russell. When she catches, she takes a dribble and she tries to leverage body contact, find your, your body with her upper arm, and then on the fadeaway, get her shot away. So 
Alicia Froling had done a tremendous job from a scouting perspective to be able to wear contact down the middle. And then now there's a counter move from Russell taking the bounce and then keeping in control of her body on the spot to elevate over the top. And this timeout brought to you by the WNBL. The official app is finally here. We don't want you to miss a minute of the action. Therefore, for live scores, highlights, all your player and team info, everything you need to follow the league is available on the WNBL app. Download the free app today. Not long remaining in this first half. And all major stat columns very even between both sides. Cole leads the way with 15. Kraka has 11 for the Spirit. Both sides shooting 33% from three, above 40% from the field. And 65 seconds remain in the half. Kelly Wilson. Mitchell's had some good minutes off the bench here. Where on? Kick out, moving it forwards. Frolling, quick hands from Ernst. And the steal to boot. Chance for a two for one if they get a quick shot here. Would give them two possessions before the end of the half. Ernst. Wilson did well to deny the handoff. Ernst will turn and fire. It's not really in sync, but they've got a job to do here defensively, the Flyers, to get the ball back with as much time left on the clock as possible. Griffin. Two-man action with Abby Werang has Leilani Mitchell. Forces her baseline. It's the foul call first, though. Stuck on an island there was Leilani Mitchell with KG23. Hard to defend at the best of times, and everybody in the league knows that Kelsey Griffin likes to drive the ball towards the baseline, and it's one thing to know it's coming, it's another to stop it. She's so quick with that first step, and then as soon as she's got her shoulder leveraged with yours, she can keep that straight line. Good news is for the Flyers, they had a foul to give. 14 second shot clock. Werung drives on Ernst, goes right at Jackson, and LJ has the stop. 11 seconds. They've got to get on their bike here. Southside can take the lead going into the sheds. Rochi straight to the cup. Count it. One to come at the line for Matty Rochi. Perfect response and a great change of pace to be able to accelerate on that straight line drive, wear the contact and finish. Tremendous job of rejecting the screen. Anytime someone comes to set a screen, if the defender doesn't get in the road and you reject the pick, it's one on zero in a drive to the basket. And Rochi at the line puts it down. But the Flyers can't foul here or they're going to send the Spirit to the line. Griffin, two seconds. Needs to get the long range heave away. It won't happen. 39 plays 37 at the halftime break here at Red Energy Arena. Southside have fought back to lead this one after trailing by five points at quarter time. You know, very close affair so far, Mark. It has, and it's been you know, partly the rhythms of the game, you know, being a, a real catalyst for what you see on the scoreboard. So the first quarter, a clear intention to get out and run as much as possible, advance the ball by, via the pass if you're the Bendigo spirit. And that commitment to that, you paid more dividends than not. Um, so being able to score... In
with one more close game. You suspect to come here. Two points is the margin at the half. The Flyers with the lead in Bendigo. Ford dealers have backed sport in communities for nearly 100 years. And now, from the Boomers and Opals to Aussie Hoops, your local Ford dealer is proud to support basketball. Because all dreams start somewhere. One player who is absolutely taking the competition by storm this season is Izzy Borlais, the South Australian product. We know she comes from a family of sporting royalty, but she's making her own name in this competition. It was my first season and didn't really have any expectations leading into it. I guess I received some accolations at the end of the season. I had like an inkling that maybe I could come away with one of them, but getting two was just amazing and I was really grateful for that. My dad, who used to play football in the SNFL for the Port Magpies. My mum played for the Diamond for netball. My brother plays in the AFL and my sister does surf lifesaving rowing and she's represented Australia. I'm really lucky to have my family members who can help me out. Now your heart is full again, Rachel Sport, because the iconic number 14 that you made famous here at the Adelaide Lightning in the WNBL was retired but it is back on the back of Easy Ball Lace and I know it's making your heart sing. It certainly is, I couldn't think of anyone better and I know that Izzy's doing some wonderful moves out there. Much better dribbler than I ever was. Wrapped the, to see number 14 out there and um, really exciting uh, future for Miss Ball Lace. You know, obviously in pre-season you could tell, you know, okay, this girl's gonna be a star. She blew me away as well, just with, you know, the season she had to watch her play and to watch her grow and I'm excited to see what she does this season. She's just got so much to her game. It's powerful, she's robust, she's got a perfect basketball body. She can go inside, she's a great rebounder. The basketball world is at her feet really, she's gonna have a great career. I'd like to be better than I was last season. I haven't had the most ideal off season with a couple of niggling injuries so I'm trying not to be too hard on myself. So whatever happens, happens really. Hi, I'm Loz. I'm Izzy.
Get ready for a hundred special events. Merry Christmas! Tonight at seven, the stars are out for Christmas. And when Mrs. Claus comes to town, Santa's secrets will be exposed. My husband is well into his 70s and still working. I've also heard he's got a second family in Darwin. <laughs> the 100 Christmas Special, tonight at 7 on 9 and 9 now. Hello, Australia. Want to go for a ride? A summer heat wave has arrived. This is it. This is what you've been waiting for. Four spicy nights a week. It's open season. It's Love Island. The Afraid Boys. The power has shifted. The girls are in charge. charge. What the hell? What the hell? Surprise! The steamy villain era has arrived. New Love Island. New episodes drop Monday to Thursday on 9 now. Welcome back to Bendigo here, second half, not far away. Liam Ellison and Mark Alabakov with you on the call for the game between the Bendigo Spirit and the Flyers. One possession game at the half, 39 plays, 37, and uh, it is such an arm wrestle, really. You can't separate these two at the moment in every respect, Mark. You really can't, and I'm looking through statistically as well as what I'm seeing in terms of passing the eye test. The thing is neck and neck. Field goal percentages are somewhat similar. Three-point percentages are identical. Offensive rebounds, so work ethic uh, related metrics, very similar. Nine assists for both of the teams. The only things that are discernible is that the Southside Flyers have only gotten on the free throw line twice, but then the foul trouble from both teams is going to play a part here. You've got three fouls to Ali Wilson, three fouls to Abby Wehrung. They're two of the top three three-point shooters for the Spirit, and they're going to defend perimeter players. So Cole and Matty Rochi have got 25 points between them. They need Wilson and Wehrung out on the floor. To the contrary, with the Southside Flyers, you've got Potch and Russell on two fouls apiece, so that could play a factor. And so far, getting the team going, Potch, Lauren Jackson and Mercedes Russell have a combined four points. So Coach Cheryl Chambers has got to find a way to get some or all of those three athletes going if they're going to be able to put a, a winnable scoreline on the board. It's a great point you make regarding needing Werung and Ali Wilson because nearly all of their scoring has come from their guards. Cole, Rochi, Leilani, Mitchell accounting for 31 of their 39 points. Yeah, they've been massive and the aggressiveness that they're playing with is absolutely what they've needed. Um, you've got Beck Cole being able to make plays off the mid-range, so she's obviously being forced to her left hand. She's so dangerous when she drives to her right. So being forced to plan Bs, but she's ready and accustomed to being forced into those types of shots and she's knocking them down. And then Maddie Rochi finished that second quarter aggressively getting to the basket. Didn't she? Ten points and five dimes at the half for Maddie Rochi and just a couple of turnovers. So playing with some efficiency so far in this game. Beck Cole, one of the players of the half, the south side skipper. As you said, maybe having to settle for some of those mid-range jumpers didn't matter. They were going down. Exactly. And the thing about Beck Cole is she's always going to hunt trying to get to the rim on her right hand because that's her bread and butter. And the moment that you let up as a defender, she's going to get there and get layups and leverage your body contact and get and one plays. So being forced into plan Bs, which is her pull-up jump shot in either direction, but predominantly going to her left, the class of her as an athlete, she's able to knock them down and has a readiness for the types of shots that defenders are going to force her into. Here we go, third quarter, just about underway here at Red Energy Arena. Bendigo with a victory already in round seven, 81-77 over the Adelaide Lightning and Southside looking to avoid an 0-2 stretch over the weekend. Cole straight away out of the half with the first two. And you see, still being forced into that jump shot, so the defender on the screen is sitting off and giving a cushion of space, baiting her to shoot the pull-up. Davis. Now it's Kelsey Griffin. Wehrung down low into the post. Russell defending Kelsey Griffin. Good recognition out to Wilson, who's got four seconds to work with. Rochi hit the deck. 
and can't put it down. Rochi running point. Here's Cole, her backcourt mate. Russell with just the four points at the half. Davis trying to deny the post and does. Six seconds. Cole off the dribble. Inside the keyway, on fire at the moment, Beck Cole. And that's where she's most dangerous, going to her right hand. And she's aware of it, the whole league is aware of it, that you've got to try and take that away as much as possible. So she's always going to look for that as a plan A. And if you let her get to her right hand, she's wholly in rhythm. Really, really tough to stop going downhill. 8 of 10 from the field on the game. 17 points. One of the things that I love about Beck Cole and watching her play is the passion that she plays with. Whenever it's a big moment and she makes a basket like that, she just exudes it. There's a fist pump. She wears her heart on her sleeve, and it's a wonderful thing you know, when the thing's rolling for her. It really drives the energy of her team. It's infectious, isn't it? Absolutely. She's got them up and about at the moment. The Flyers out by seven, their biggest lead of the game. A 1-2-2 half-court trap here deployed by the Flyers, trying to disrupt the rhythm of the spirit. Wilson picked her way out of it. So you look at the shot clock, it's down to 11 seconds, and there hasn't been a patterned offense call. As Werong drains the three. You just can't let Abby Werong have time and space to shoot that. No, you certainly can't. That's her second three of the evening. And much needed. Two of two from beyond the arc. Cole. Everything going through her at the moment. Quick thinking, though, from Abby Werung. Kraka. Wilson. Chance to stop and fire. Nadia Poch. Yet to hit the score column in this contest. Under the basket. Working on Davis. There's some crafty finishing. Looks like Kelsey Griffin down. Hopefully she's okay. Looks to be all right getting up. Not moving too gingerly. I'm sure the Bendigo faithful, though, it's always as potch with that beautiful finish. Always heart and mouth, heart and mouth stuff. Mark Allen back off when Kelsey hits the deck. She's the type of athlete that we would be just as likely to have a sore nose, go off and get taped up from head to toe, come back on and play. A warrior. Ali Wilson in every way. Feeds Kelsey Griffin on cue and Werung again with set. Somehow didn't go down. Rattled out to the advantage of Rochi. Cole is to her right. She'll slow it up. Jackson back out there for south side. Turns and fires from the top. I was just about to say with Lauren Jackson, where she's not the, you know, the spry young Lauren Jackson that you would have seen in years gone by, she provides a three-point shooting threat. So when you push the ball in transition, if defenders are flattened out and they try to stop all the driving lanes, Jackson's often behind you with no one around. Jackson on cue, rolling to the bucket for Cole. Whistle first. Second personal on Ruth Davis. That's often what you see with these great veteran players. They find ways to adjust who they are as an athlete to still play to their strengths. But, you know, father time is undefeated, so you find ways that you, know, you can contribute to the team with what you're still capable of. Rochi. Russell providing the space. Four seconds. Again, it's in the hands of Beck Cole. And Kraka pulls down the rebound. Wilson. Crucial juncture of this game for Bendigo. Ali Wilson follows her own miss. Russell in there. Did really well. Ali Wilson. A fresh 14 for the Spirit. Kraka. Skipped over to Wilson with five seconds. Davis in the post. Needs to get the shot away. Oh, that is a tough finish over the outstretched arm of Russell. Super tough finish there by Ruth Davis, but a challenging proposition with the foul trouble that Russell's in. Every time it gets to late clock, it seems to go to a post up and put her under the pump now, defensively. Good recognition, Mark. Russell with the two personals. Rochi feeding inside to LJ. Now Russell tangled up with Kraka. Bendigo bench can't believe the call. A small win for Bendigo, being able to come in and shrink that space. Now, while they give away the foul there, 
with only one dribble, Mercedes Russell could have elevated onto her left hand. Taking the second bounce, she put the ball in harm's way. Was lucky to get away with a foul on that call. Line ball call goes the way of the Flyers. Into Jazz Dickey. Ali Wilson gambled for the steal. Rochi makes her pay. Back out to a seven-point lead. Crocker. This is where the Spirit need to dig deep. They lead by double figures at one stage, and now Weron lets it fly. Big shot. Massive shot because the Flyers have done a tremendous job of containing the basketball and shut down any advantages that the Spirit had. Continues her efficient night shooting from beyond the arc. Abby Weron now fronting up defensively on Leilani. Rochi. Poked away from behind from Kraka. Can Wilson get it ahead? Might have been a professional foul against Rochi. Doesn't like it regardless. But you can see a, a renewed intention of trying to push the ball in transition. So every player gets tired as the game wears on. So can you commit to being able to play fast in transition and let the ball do the work with kick ahead passes? Jackson's got seven rebounds. We'll take a break. Rochi's picked up her second. Here's Kelly Wilson. Whistle first. Offensive foul against Bendigo. I believe a moving screen called there on Ruth Davis. Well spotted, Mark. So what you're looking for, part of that is the cutter, the cutter's responsibility. You've got to wait for your teammates' feet to land and be set before you take off on your cut. Mercedes Russell, big screen, setting up Rochi to go straight down the lane. Case in point, a wonderful screen set by Mercedes Russell there. Had her feet set, created the biggest advantage possible for Rochi to get to the rim. Davis, handing it back to her point guard, Kelly Wilson. Where are they again for three? Make it four to her name. And she's feeling it. Four of five from beyond the arc. Keeping the spirit in it here in the third quarter. Mitchell. Rochi retrieves it from Ernst inside to Mercedes Russell. Quick hands from Griffin. Trying to tie it up and blocked from Davis. Momentum starting to swing in the favor of the Spirit. One possession ball game. Griffin. Posts up on Dickey and Russell. They swarmed her to the Flyers. And you have to, because she's such a dangerous player, especially in moments like this, where the game's hanging in the balance. Call here from the ref. So six minutes gone in the third quarter. It's the outside already in the bonus going forward. Here's a better look at it. And Dickey just getting tangled up with Kelly Wilson. Now the opportunity that you have if you're the Flyers is you've got the Spirit in foul trouble. Every foul for the remaining 4 minutes 14 seconds, you're going to shoot two free throws. So that lends itself towards the pace that you play at, the way that you're able to attack, and can you put the ball and dribble penetration in positions where there's likely to be contact. Now three players in foul trouble, the Spirit. To the contrary, if they settle for outside shots, then you waste away that advantage that you could have here in a game that's been an arm wrestle all the way through. Going to be interesting to watch how they play it. Going down the stretch in the third. A big few minutes for the Flyers could make it really tough for Bendigo. Where up? Got the hot hand. Weaving in and out of traffic. Out to Wilson for three. Gets there to Kraka. Bendigo can reset. Kraka. Three goes down and will count. Frolling was fouled first. Back to a two-point ball game, Bendigo. And it's been the hot shooting from beyond the arc for the Spirit, which has kept them right in this contest. Absolutely, and this is a smart screen in here from Alicia Froling to try and pin in her own player, essentially, Carly Ernst, so that she can't switch out and chase out the shooter, Meron Kraka there. He has time and space to shoot the ball, but then also they get the foul drawn as well. 
So a big momentum shifting play potentially here for the Spirit. Possession staying with the home side. 14 to work with. Kraka. For a moment, he thought she might pull the trigger again. Where on? Two hot shooters for the Spirit. Froling with the screen. Driving out Mercedes Russell. Understood the assignment and Froling has ripped down the rebound for another Bendigo possession. Samuels, foul call. It's going to be another one on Ernst. So she's got three. Third team foul for Southside. And exactly where she needed to be, moving her feet. It's just getting those hands in that was the, the trouble there. If she was able to just get Casey Samuels there in between her feet, keep her hands out to show the referee that there's no contact, wear the contact down the sternum, that would have been a tremendous defensive possession there from Carly. Again, baseline possession. Samuels. Kraka with her feet set. That one short. Flyers finally see off that trip. Cole. That's 20 points to her name, Russell. Dickey. Downhill. Turns the Jets on. How do you stop that? Jazz Dickey to the three throw line. I like her aggressiveness. The past two games, she's been trying to get to the rim, wear contact and try and get her shot off. Now, there was a switch on that pick and roll, so watch uh, what Mercedes Russell does in this. So even if there was no foul call, you've got the taller Russell on the smaller Casey Samuels in a rebounding contest. That's as advantageous as the layup attempt. Six points, two of two from the field, Jazz Dickey. And two of two from the free throw line. Missing on the first, but of course, 20 points in the last outing. Almost surprising we haven't seen more offense run through her, Mark. I mean, potentially, like, she's done a tremendous job of shooting the basketball, or scoring the basketball, I should say. But, I mean, this one is an absolute arm wrestle to be 51-53 at the moment. It's quite low scoring, or 54, rather. Quite low scoring. It's indicative of the gravity that this game has. Another offensive foul. Arm wrestle has been the word in this one. No separation in stats either in this third quarter. They're up in defense, the spirit. So both coaches at the moment holding their nerve with their plan. There hasn't been any panic or outland. Great pass. Oh, that is a ripping dime to the rolling Russell. Hasn't been any outlandish changes or anything defensively that they've tried to do differently to really disrupt the opponent. They're both trusting their plan that they've come in with since the first quarter. Wilson. Assessing his cracker. Six seconds. Puts it downhill against Cole. Inside to Froling. No good on the first. And Mitchell comes up with it for the Flyers. In transition, she'll opt inside to Mercedes Russell. And once she gets set, down low in the post, good luck stopping her. If she can commit to rim running like that, she can be a real target for them or draw a number of defenders that are going to open up teammates on the perimeter. Froling hesitates. Now she makes a move and Russell could not risk a, a fourth foul. Great pick up by you. So you see that she's wanting to stay out on the floor. She's not doing anything silly to put herself in foul trouble and then potentially have to sit. In fact, I should correct myself, she's got two personals, Russell. Now she goes to work in the post, hook shot will fall. Or will it? Waved off the other way. Oh, wow. Russell cannot believe it, so she will have the three personals now. Shell-shocked with the call. That's a big 50-50 call. Here, because you've got Alicia Frawley Rolling, leaning in, so she was the one who initiated the contact. Arguably, Mercedes Russell has got a reason to be a little bit upset at the moment, but the referee's call stands, and now the Flyers have to have a mental flush and get on with the next play. They can't change that call. They've got to be able to get a stop here and then try to execute going back to their end. That will be the challenge for the Flyers, not to make it a momentum-shifting call. Wilson pulls up. Russell controls it. 90 seconds remaining in this third quarter. The choice Coach Cheryl Chambers has is do you leave her out there at risk of being able to pick up her fourth foul or do you ride this little wave of momentum 
And a great screen to release Cole. And protect her going into the fourth quarter. Seems to be trusting her big so far. Remaining out there. Griffin tries to go at Russell and does. And that is the risk. Griffin holding her nose. And she's copped some knocks we know this week. Absolutely the risk having Russell out on the floor because then now that hurts. That puts her one foul away from being out of the ball game. But you knew that Kelsey Griffin, who is as good a player of the game in terms of the strategy of basketball to go at Russell knowing that she's either going to be baited to reach or she's got to give up a straight line drive. So Russell unsurprisingly will sit. How long for? We'll have to wait and see with four personals. My guess is you're probably going to see her sit until the fourth quarter and then the choice that Cheryl, uh, Coach Cheryl Chambers has is do you sit in a 2-3 zone and try to protect her to have her out on the floor? Cole straight down the middle to the cup. No one stopped it. That helps. Or do you put her out on the floor with maybe seven or eight minutes to go? Griffin. Oh, good on the deep three. Davis did well. Where are Back out to Griffin. Big minutes for Carly Ernst here. And Griffin just falls home. What a finish from KG23. Well, you look for her to stand up when it's winning time. And I know there's still a quarter left to play, but there's a momentum shift that has started to go towards the Flyers. And then you can trust Kelsey Griffin to be able to make good decisions and wrestle it back. Dickey stepped through. That's a walk, and Griffin knew it. So will we see Russell to start the fourth or with a five-point lead, do you try and sit her for three or four minutes, Mark? Well, I mean, that's the risk that you take. I think if you're going to have her on the floor, you've got to try to protect her. So Coach Cheryl Chambers has a 2-3 zone within her defensive package, which is one method of being able to have her out on the floor, but perhaps less at risk of fouling. But this is a really key possession coming up. If the Spirit can get a score here... Final look, Bendigo, four seconds. Wilson inside. Leilani Mitchell came across the double. Wilson gets it off in time and drains it. The red light expired. It will count. Back to a two-point ball game. And Kelly Wilson, when it mattered, had what it took to put it down. Two-point ball game at three-quarter time, Mark. And she can do that. She's an outstanding three-point shooter. Now, teams will go under pick and rolls often to try and bait her to shoot it. But catch and shoot on a ball reversal, she's as knocked down as there is in the competition. Her direct matchup, Leilani Mitchell, ran straight to the post to try and blow up uh, what the post player was doing, opened up that kick-out pass to Wilson to be able to knock it down. What a ball game it's been. What a ball game we've got in store. Two points is the margin and an arm wrestle the whole way through. It looks like it could be until the final moments the way this one's trending. Yeah, and the big call is going to come with what Cheryl Chambers does with Mercedes Russell. Because you know, the challenge you have, do you trust her not to foul, knowing that there was at least three possessions within that third quarter alone where the Southside Flyers did a tremendous job of defending and then late clock, the ball was thrown into the post and you had Mercedes Russell isolated on somebody in the low post and in a position where a lot of fouls occur. And that's problematic. She got away or got out of trouble, I should say, on three occasions, just like that one there. You know, you worry about those situations because you need Russell on the floor as a catalyst for your offense and a finisher within your offense. You highlighted foul trouble at the half as well, and it was the guards for Bendigo, Ali Wilson, Abby Werung, who had three apiece. Neither of them registered a foul in that quarter. Instead, Abby Werung gets hot from three, and it's Mercedes Russell who is in foul trouble. So it flips the script just that little bit. Maybe Bendigo with an upper hand. It does, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the foul trouble that you have now with Mercedes Russell... When we talk about Coach Kennedy Kariyama, the Benigo spirit, you have an opportunity to have her fouled out of the game if you go at her, but you never want to do that at the expense of the flow of your offense. This game is far too close to... I mean, it seems like they're not having her out on the floor to start this fourth quarter, but when she comes in, you know, how, how much can you surf that edge, so to speak, of being able to go at her knowing that she's not going to want to foul and get herself fouled out of the ball game with bogging down your offense or changing the rhythm that you, you like to play out of? Cheryl Chambers will require big minutes from Lauren Jackson and Carly Ernst to start this fourth quarter. And you need a post presence from within that. So both of those two players, great three-point shooters, and both, when they're involved in a pick and roll, will pick and pop to the three-point line. If they both do that, 
the game's going to be back on spirit terms because it's going to result in a lot of long rebounds that they can run from. Wilson to start the fourth quarter here in Bendigo. Nearly a turnover. Werung just got a hold of it. Wilson off the window. Floater goes down. Cool as a cucumber, Kelly Wilson. And ties it up for Bendigo. It's almost like she doesn't feel pressure. What a last couple of possessions for Wilson. A foul call. And I suppose, you know, for her longevity in the competition, she has played as a WNBL athlete for longer than some of the people on the court have been alive. Absolutely. It is an unbelievable career she's put together. Of course, brought up the three and a half thousand point milestone just recently as Carly Ernst has been fouled. And that helps. I like Carly Ernst going to the basket. She's got a really long reach as well, and there's going to be the expectation that she picks and pops to the three-point line, as I alluded to. So when the defense has an expectation and they think they've got all the answers, you change the questions. Smart play by Carly Ernst. Shows her her veteran nous. It does, and she will take him at the line. Good on the first one. So Abby Werung has hit the pine. And two of two from Carly Ernst. Puts the Flyers back in the lead. Griffin, top of the keyway. Drives at Ernst and draws the foul. And that's the foul discipline that I alluded to earlier, especially with, uh, with respect to Carly Ernst. So did a great job with her footwork, but then just brings her arms down. So at six foot five, arguably with her arms raised above her head, she'd be over seven feet tall. That's still a tough proposition for Griffin to get her shot over the top of. Russell has four, Carly Ernst has four. But once you bring your arms down, then the only thing for the referee to do is call a foul. And Abby Werung as well will have to sit for a while here. Rochi. Jackson. Providing in the post. Rochi will let it fly from three. Ernst hands it back to Rochi. And this time she makes it. That's a massive three ball. I thought she had a left-handed driving lane there and driving the closeout from Crocker would have been a great move as well. Confidence from Rochi and Miran Crocker. Disposed of Rochi illegally, offensive foul. One of the things that Maddie Rochi does a really good job of is beating you to spots on the floor and she, she's waiting, she baits you to make body contact because she pauses for a, a one count, gets her arms out and then she goes to the ground. She does a, a really good job of making clear to the referee that there's been contact made by the offense. Inbounds to Rochi. This is a critical possession here. Four points the margin. Jackson. Just assessing at the moment. Bendigo not giving away anything defensively. Poked away. Bendigo thought it could have been their ball. Eight left on the clock, but the more that you can go bucket for bucket, or you can keep a, let's say, four to six point lead, that'll keep enough confidence in coach Cheryl Chambers mind that she doesn't need to roll uh, and risk roll out and risk I should say Mercedes Russell into this ball game but the moment it gets hairy you've got to pull the trigger on that she's too valuable Rochi with six seconds driving at Crocker tried to flip it up at in would have been a tough finish good D from Crocker Griffin gonna go right out Ernst we know she's got four can't risk the foul call, and Griffin won't make on the fadeaway two. Poked out from Wilson. Far better as a defensive adjustment from Carly Ernst. So when she closes anybody out with a raised arm, it takes away the shot against anybody of arguably any size. And we know that Kelsey Griffin does a great job of driving and finding contact and being able to finish. I thought she did really well containing the, the dribble drive then. Jackson, entry pass, did well to get over Davis. And excellent work, paddling it back over to Cole. Cole here goes against Kelsey Griffin. So Benny goes fourth team foul. Griffin in no foul trouble whatsoever. Is 
And there's so much time remaining in this fourth quarter. Getting into the bonus this early could make a big difference. Absolutely. And just getting out to Beck Cole to take away the three-point shot. Just probably got her body a little bit too close and then at risk of fouling. Cole goes to work on Wilson. Bendigo basketball. All clean defense from Kelly Wilson. Now, if you're Beck Cole, you just want her to make the play that she sees. She had a left-handed drive. In that instance, you just want her to go up and be able to finish. There she's leveraging the contact. So where there's a, a body contact from Kelly Wilson, if you fall over like that and fumble the ball out of bounds, if the referee doesn't make a call, there's only ever a bad outcome. But if you go up strong and try to make the play that you see and try to finish, whether the, the call comes or not, it's still you know, a positive outcome for your team. Dump down low, Davis. We'll go to the strike. Excellent high-low play there from Davis and Griffin. So being able to get Jackson on the wrong side of Ruth Davis and then throw the ball, not to Davis, but away from Jackson where she can release contact and catch it and then shoot on the turn. So watch this. She releases contact and shoots with the left hand. So she's always got airspace to be able to get that shot away. Miss on the first for Davis. Uncharacteristic. Five boards, a couple of blocks so far this evening for Ruth Davis. And not that time on the trip. Now, after this offense, this would be a really good time to think about bringing Mercedes Russell back into the contest. Dickey. Two and a half gone in the fourth quarter. That's an aim to see when Cheryl Chambers does indeed pull that trigger inside to LJ. Count it. That's a big play. One of the things that I love about LJ is that when she pivots, she's so good with her footwork that she pivots on a half beat. It's quicker than all of the other things that she does. So she catches you by surprise. Look how quick that turn is. And then being able to get body control so that she can make her finish. She has a pump fake in the air too that just allows her to get control of her body and put it off the glass and in. Battles out, but it means Southside are in the bonus for the final seven and a half minutes here. Wilson in motion. Backed out by Griffin. It's between to... her legs, Ali Wilson. You've got to carry a hand on Alex Wilson. She's always a three-point shooting threat. Froling with the pick. Kelly Wilson throws it into the corner with two seconds. Letting it fly as Griffin wasn't far away. Strong bounce off the rim. Southside ball. Now, the thing that you have at your disposal if you're Cheryl Chambers is exactly what she's about to do, put game manager Leilani Mitchell back in. Who's just cool, calm and collected. She's going to give a little rest here to Beck Cole. And for the spirit, you know, you're peppering the basket at the moment. If there's a, a score here from the Flyers, look for coach Kennedy Kariyama to call a timeout and try and stem the flow, try and stop any momentum that the Flyers get from a potential score in this possession. It's all the communication from the Southside bench signalling Abby Werung out there with four. Will they attack her? Rochi with Werung defending the rock. Ernst with the screen. It'll be Jackson who fronts and fires from beyond the arc. And Ernst on the follow. Timeout, Southside, eight-point lead. 71-63. And they're in a good position here. This one brought to you by Ford Aussie Hoops, the perfect introduction to the world of basketball for kids aged 5 to 10 years. Basketball Australia are launching the Ford Aussie Hoops Award for 2023. To find out more, visit aussiehoops.basketball to register. This feels like a big moment in the game, Mark. It really is, and it's a crucial possession here. A great timeout by Coach Kennedy Kariyama to try and stem the scoring run that the Flyers have been on. But whatever they draw up on this possession, they want to try and orchestrate themselves a score as best they can. The challenge that the Spirit have is that they're in foul trouble. You know, not only with the, the five fouls, so every foul thereafter is going to send the Flyers to the free throw line, but you might see a change in defensive tax from uh, Coach Kariyama as well. So they've had a 2-3 zone that they've deployed at different times within this contest to try and break momentum. Is this an opportunity where they can potentially, quote-unquote, hide defenders in foul trouble, 
roll out a defense that is going to force the Flyers not to be able to get the ball to people that they want when they want. It forces more of a team game where you've got to sacrifice yourself to get somebody else a score. It changes the dynamic a little bit. We'll see how it affects things here. Underway out of the timeout. Where are Alicia Froling on the perimeter. Rochi guarding the handoff and a turnover. She can put it on the deck. Great in the open floor, Rochi, and drawing the foul on Froling. And that's what you teach guards to do, to try and accelerate. And the faster that you get, the more you're able to increase or keep a, a, an advantage on the defender that is chasing. You have the taller Alicia Froling being able to pursue this one. And then if you can jump into her as weird as it sounds, jump into her armpit, then her length isn't able to disrupt the shot attempt. If you're to fade away from the contact, then her, her length can get to it. And good on the second. Four minutes gone in this fourth quarter. And it's the biggest lead of the ball game for the Flyers. Wereham. Off the dribble. Wilson spinning and working on Leilani Mitchell. Jackson controlling the glass. Unlucky to miss that. I thought she did a really good job of getting to the rim. I would have even liked her to pull the trigger on that corner three. Mitchell's been fouled in motion. Or has she? Goes against the Flyers. It's a little win here for the Spirit. You get the ball back. There's plenty of time left in this ball game. And the way that Werang and Krakow are shooting the three-point shot, they're never out of the contest. Krakow attacking Diggy. Frolling, spinning around. And she puts it up and in for an important Bendigo bucket. It was. And being able to control her body, trap Jasmine Dickey's feet behind her and roll off that obstacle. Here is Jazz Dickey. But this is what you create too when you've got Jazz Dickey on the floor, who's a great rebounder. She's not as tall as Mercedes Russell. Leilani Mitchell puts it down for three. So Froling has a mismatch. Kraker wide open. Nothing but nylon for Kraker. Back to back, big buckets. Bendigo keeps them within seven. Halfway through this fourth quarter. Now you want a patterned offense, let the ball touch sets of hands, allow everybody to settle down. You don't want a rushed shot like this one. Rochi <laughs> makes him pay. Very, very high risk, high reward from Matty Rochi. It was brave as Kraka, they are trading baskets at the moment. On fire from beyond the arc. Crark has had, had herself another night from three. Four of seven. Jackson. Still a seven-point lead, the Flyers. Dickey gets around Wilson on the reverse. And it's Crocker on the defensive glass. What's the call here? Last touched from Carly Ernst. Now, two of the best possessions for the Flyers on the offensive end has been when they've gone to the post. It was to Carly Ernst, uh, and I believe prior that, it was to Lauren Jackson. Anytime they've gone very perimeter heavy towards the back end here, it hasn't been profitable for them not getting the ball into the key early. Crack up. Mercedes Russell back out there and on cue of the steal. Utilizing that length. And Rochi has 22 points in the ball game to go with seven dimes. And smart from her to slow the tempo of the game. The clock is your friend. There's still a lot of it to go. But you don't want to take a rushed shot that the Spirit can get out and run with. Dickey inside to Russell. Now she'll go to work and Froling walled up. All clean, said the ref. Wilson. Kraka, extra pass. Griffin will let it fly for three. And short on that occasion. Alani Mitchell handling the rock. Approaching crunch time here at Red Energy Arena. Lost Werung, Mitchell will let it fly and makes it. Three-point shooting barrage here in the fourth quarter. Double-digit lead flyers and we've got a timeout. 81 play 71. Leilani Mitchell with another three ball. And she's four of five from beyond the arc today. And that's why she's worth her weight in gold. She's been here before. She's never flustered. And 
Yeah, interestingly, she's just able to make that shot when the team needs it. She's done that in multiple places, in finals, when the team needs it most. It's advantage flyers, but the Spirit have a, an opportunity here to try and go for one more run. You know, smart timeout by Coach Kennedy Kariyama to try and stem the flow. You get a chance to rally your troops, orchestrate a shot type that you're looking for here on this next possession. Offense has been flowing for both teams. 19 plays 11 in the fourth quarter in favor of Southside. To get all of the key stats as well, do not forget the official WNBL app is here. We don't want you to miss a minute of the action. Highlights, live scores, all your video content available by downloading the free WNBL app today and a huge three minutes and 19 seconds remaining here in Bendigo on your Sunday evening hoops to round out round seven. A pretty high level game of hoops, hasn't it, Mark? Absolutely, and it's the proverbial arm wrestle that we alluded to. So just trying to gain ascendancy, both of the teams. So the Flyers being able to break away at the moment. There's been a, a number of deep threes. But for them to pound the ball inside and try and slow the game down, get on the free throw line will be the ticket. For the Spirit, you need to keep attacking the moment the ball changes possessions. We're on. Two-man game with Froling, moved onwards via Kraka. Here's Wilson penetrating out to Weron. Got the hot hand from three. And that's their MO. The ball continues to move. There's dribble penetration. The Flyers are having to chase all of the time, and inevitably an advantage is created. You can see that jersey ripped from Kelly Wilson. An easy call for the ref. We're walking down for three throws. Lochie will take him. Well, she's three of four from this spot this evening. I like the inclusion of Beck Cole back into the lineup here. She's always going to be presenting a dangerous scoring threat, but she's someone who can make free throws if she wears contact and gets put on the line. Rochi good on the first. Equally, this is a, a great counterbalance from coach Kennedy Kariyama to have Kelsey Griffin and four guards on the floor all of which can shoot the three can they get that fast pace offense moving here in crunch time Kraka picked up her dribble Russell's on the perimeter on an island against Werung she'll step back for three did well to close it out Russell Griffin fading out for the three pick and pop drains it number one goes Bendigo on fire from three they've got 14 of them being aggressive and looking for that three-point shot. Back to six points the lead. Mitchell inside, Ernst. Just keeping the scoreboard ticking over Southside. But it's the decision-making that comes from Leilani Mitchell. Wilson filtering out to the three-point line. Finally a miss. Russell all clean on the screen. Five on four here. Rochi throws it up for a big. Just not on the same page on that occasion. Rochi wanting to be aggressive off the dribble and try and throw that lob pass just to the bottom corner of the backboard for Russell to go and collect and score. Russell with a miscommunication thinking they're going to hold the ball up and fade it out to the short corner. Kelsey Griffin puts it on the deck. Contest was clean from Carly Ernst. 100 seconds remain in this ball game. Bendigo. Need to mount up the stops as Ernst and Ali Wilson have collided on the screen. Both pulling up a little bit sore as well. So it'll go against Ali Wilson. Another player in four fouls alongside Werung, Froling and Kelly Wilson for the Spirit. And her feet set. Just inadvertently getting in each other's way. So Weron will take a break. And Mitchell and the Flyers are in the bonus. So Weron has got her fifth and will sit. And then the decision to put Alicia Froling in gives you another rebounder. So you're leveraging, you, know, you need three-point plays. It doesn't have to be a three-point shot. It could be a, a Froling rebounded score through contact. Back out to a 10-point margin. And timeout. Minute 34 remains 
south side did really well there to stem the flow of the spirit who are hitting everything from beyond the arc for a, a few minutes mark yeah and if you're the flyers now you've got to know that that three-point shot is coming and it's what they've leveraged to be able to stay within the contest so you've got to play a little bit tighter knowing that the the ramifications of that are you're going to get beat off the dribble potentially or it makes you susceptible to it and then what are you talking about as far as help defense? Are you going to rush the ball if it's going into an open lap and potentially open up a three-point look in front of the driver? Or do you stunt and stay, you know, be prepared to wear a two-point shot but not allow three in a possession knowing that you'll get the ball back? Ten points is enough for the Spirit to be able to make up, especially with possession here. If they can orchestrate something to get themselves a score, you know, especially a three-point shot, it could knock it down to seven. There's still a lot of basketball to be played. To the contrary, if you're Coach Cheryl Chambers, you're in no hurry whatsoever because any foul, you're going to be on the free throw line. There's potentially going to be the urgency to try to stop the clock uh, and increase the amount of possessions left in this one. But you want to have all of your best three, uh, free throw shooters on the floor to be able to keep the scoreboard ticking over in counter to the spirit fouling you to stop the clock. They hold all the cards at the moment, the Flyers. With a minute 34 on the clock, Bendigo possession. Crocker and Griffin combined. 14 seconds to work with. Ali Wilson. Griffin working on Rochi. Gets to her spot. Inside the lane, all clean from Matty Rochi. Stays with the spirit. Crocker lets it fly on the shot clock buzzer. Griffin Oglass. And she'll earn him at the strike. But look, you're okay with that if you're the Flyers because you've had to expend 20 seconds worth of clock off the clock, uh, inevitably here for a set of free throws in which you know, you've got to make one at a time. So there's no guarantee that you know, Kelsey Griffin, especially with the effort that she's playing with, is going to be able to knock these down. Or at least you challenge her to. It's good on the first. But credit the spirit, they keep coming. It goes two of two. Eight points to the margin. Clarker defending Rochi. The bucket here would almost put it out of reach. Mitchell. Eight seconds, Rochi. You want to have something on the rim here. Ernst. Now they look to go there. That's a great pass to find Russell on the reverse. Carly Ernst with a vision. Ten point lead. It would almost take a capitulation at this point from the Flyers. Wilson flipped it inside and Cole saw better of it. If you run, it's five on four right now with Alicia Froling behind the play. Southside will be in no rush. Rochi letting time wind down. Not looking to foul as Crocker. Rochi's got 24 points to her name. Seven assists inside, blocked by Wilson. Ernst flips it up and in. What a finish. And that'll do it. 91 play 79. Griffin. One last look if they want it inside. Alicia Froling gets the call in one. Brings up 11 on the evening for Alicia Froling. Excellent recognition to know that the Flyers are playing that three-point line so tightly. To be able to go into the post, there's going to be less help there. And you've got Froling on the smaller Leilani Mitchell. Now, unfortunately, it's not going to change the outcome of this game, but it's a smart decision down in the latter part of, of this one. Short on the free throw. Mercedes Russell with the rebound. The Flyers have got the job done here at Red Energy Arena 91-81. 10-point lead over the Spirit, who were valiant. And that was some ball game, Mark Alabakov. Amazing. A huge second half from the Southside Flyers just to be able to get the game back on their terms and execute within the half court. But credit to the Spirit, they hung in there. And this was a literal arm wrestle for the bulk of the game. And there was only a few really key baskets, some massive threes in that fourth quarter that really separated the two teams. I thought they were admirable against the top four opponent. And it shows that they're not far away. It does. Flyers shot 55% from the field, 47% from three. Outstanding shooting down the stretch, and the Spirit as well got hot. Abby Weram on fire. Five of six from three. Meron Kraka had five triples as well. 
you know, and orchestrating those types of shot attempts for people who can hit them, it's you know, it's challenging to do to hit 14 threes. good as the offensive output that she had I thought that she was fantastic defensively being able to know the scout beat really explosive guards to different spots on the floor to either bother them pull them up or she wore a couple of charges as well if I've read in this correctly drew nine fouls in the game Matty Rochi such was the aggression we know always so dangerous going downhill here's your final match stats Flyers winning the rebounding contest and the efficiency from both sides, really, especially the victors here, was outstanding. Yeah, indicative of you know the the quality of these two lineups to keep that relatively even. And we talked about the proverbial arm wrestle. The only differentiating point is 12% better from the field with Flyers. So I thought that their shot selection in the second half and the way that they ran their offense to get people looks they were able to execute at critical times and, and get the ball to people with time and space and the right sets of hands to put score on the board. It's a good way to finish round seven for the Flyers. They really struggled on their home floor on Thursday night against the Townsville Fire and to come away with a real morale lifting victory and what was a really high level game, the hoops, and put them in good stead going into round eight. Yeah, and they would have had a bit of taste in their mouth coming out of that game because it was well, you know, unflyers like, if you will, uh, in the way that they played. So they lowered their colours. So to have the opportunity, I really think that there's something to being able to rectify those issues in the same round. They have a chance now to roll this momentum on into the back end where they have a, a game just pre-Christmas, I believe, against the, the Perth Lynx in Perth, which is another really challenging one for them. They sure do. Saturday, 23rd of December in Perth is going to be their next game. And as for the Bendigo Spirit, Friday the 22nd at Sydney. So a road trip awaits them. Rochi, one of the players of the game, no doubt. It's going to be a big trip for Bendigo heading up to the Flames, who obviously have had some struggles this round. They have, and they're a quality lineup that will continue to get better at time. But you know, arguably, they're ripe for the picking as well. You know, while you've got a team that's in flux and still trying to find their way, the way that the Bendigo Spirit performed in this one, the the commitment that they had to running the basketball and then being able to execute in the half court, keep the basketball moving while advantage was created, they found Kraker and Werung. You know, when you've got three point shooters hitting the ball like that you can beat anybody this is how it all shapes up for round eight kicking off with our WNBL Wednesdays on ESPN Melbourne versus Sydney in Kayla George test match and Guy Malloy will return to the boom box massive game for both of those teams you've got Melbourne on the back of two losses Sydney who's still trying to find their way and as you alluded to you know some absolute pillars of the, the legacy that the Melbourne Boomers have had in the past decade have been those names that you just mentioned. Their return back to the boom bo box is going to be potentially a hostile one, but it's going to make for a quality basketball game. You're probably going to see the re-inclusion of Jordan Canada. I'm excited to see how that one plays out. A lot of close games across round seven and really looking forward to the Caps and the Adelaide Lightning as well. Didn't they have a terrific round? The Caps